good evening guys and uh, this is usmle videos uh, visit my website for more videos like uh, www.usmlevideos.net and uh, you can actually find so many videos on the subjects you like tonight i want to discuss the structure and function of dna and uh, this topic is very very important and uh, you will come across many many questions on this particular topic the structure and function of dna now first of all let us see where is dna located there are three things you need to remember number one bacteria bacteria have their own dna number two the nuclei of eukaryocytes so the nuclei of eukaryotic cells have dna and thirdly mitochondria mitochondria have their own dna so those are the three locations of dna now secondly dna's shape its shape is double helix and that double helix is formed by two long nucleotide chains made up of the bases now remember the bases adenine thymine guanine and cytosine and we need to remember the exact base pairing also adenine always pairs up with thymine and guanine always pairs up with cytosine so just the small mnemonic at gc adenine bases up with thymine and uh, cytosine bases up with uh, guanine and these two chains how are they linked they are linked to each other with hydrogen bonds after that how many bases or base pairs are present in human genome the number is 3 into 10 to the power of 9 that many dna base pairs are present within human genome now we have seen the location and shape and the structure now chromosome a chromosome and uh, the difference between chromosome and gene is very very important and uh, to form those concepts is also very important to uh, understand genetics in detail first of all chromosome chromosome is a segment of dna double helix whereas the gene is a segment of a linear dna that is very very important so the chromosome is actual base pair whereas the gene is the linear portion of DNA and the genetic message is uh, coded by the nucleotides and the text it forms the order in which the amino acids have to form the proteins in the process of translation and in the process of translation RNA comes now what is the difference between DNA and RNA there are three important differences number one RNA is single stranded number two it has uracil in the place of thymine and number three its sugar is ribose in the place of deoxyribose so mutations change the structure of genes either by altering by chemical agents or ionizing radiation the mutations play a role in changing the structure of these things now let us come to human genome earlier i mean many many years ago it was thought that human genome would consist at least like hundred thousand genes but now we came to know that it has only 30,000 genes. Then how, how did we come across 
such a great number like 100,000? The answer, guys, is each gene, it codes for many different forms of mRNA. That's why even though we see so many mRNAs, there are just a small number of genes coding for them. Now let us see DNA polymorphism. Now you see DNA has two kinds of regions, introns and exons. Exons are the protein coding regions, whereas introns are non-coding regions of DNA. But exons, they are only 3% of DNA structure, whereas introns, they comprise like 97% of DNA structure. That's why 97% of introns are called junk DNA, but I think it is a misnomer because just because we don't know their function, we should not call something as junk. And we don't know the exact functions of introns, so it is, uh, uh, I think it's premature to say that it is uh, some junk DNA. Now, DNA fingerprinting. The basis of DNA fingerprinting is that there is variability between the structures of human DNA. And this alteration and this variation, it comes from variable repetition of base pairs. For example, between two certain points, there are certain number of base pairs in one person, whereas in a different person, there will be more base pairs. So using the number of base pairs, it is also called restriction fragment length polymorphism, RFLP. So restriction fragment length polymorphism, it helps us in DNA fingerprinting. And also polymerase chain reaction, we can use it to copy DNA and use it later to do RFLP. Now let us uh, see mitosis. In mitosis, the DNA separates and then each DNA strand acts as a template for the formation of another strand of DNA. And this, is, this process is facilitated by DNA polymerase. It's very easy to remember. What makes more DNA? DNA polymerase. What makes more RNA? RNA polymerase. So these polymerase enzymes, they help in the synthesis of more and more DNA or RNA. Now let us discuss telomeres. Telomeres, when the cell replication involves not only DNA polymerase, but there is a special enzyme called a reverse transcriptase. This reverse transcriptase, it synthesizes short repeats of DNA at the ends of the chromosomes. So these ends of the chromosomes are called telomeres and they are very, very important because without telomeres, somatic cells die due to apoptosis. So telomeres are very, very important for the stabilization of the cell. Now meiosis, meiosis is the reduction division and uh, one of each pair of chromosomes ends up in each mature germ cell. For example, a sperm gets half of the chromosomes of the parent and in the same way the worm gets half in the final stage. So when the fertilization takes place under zygote forms, there is again the full complement of DNA present. So guys, these are the important points I wanted to discuss tonight, DNA structure and function, and come up with your own points so others can learn and discuss and uh, prepare well for the examination. And please send your comments and also visit my website at www.usmlevideos.net. That is www.usmlevideos.net. Thank you. Have a good night.